Magical is the only word again. And a big part of that magic was that no matter how much of ourselves we found to give each other, there was always more we wanted to give. I, I don't know how to talk about this. Welcome back and welcome to another Vlogmas video. My name is Fran, this is Fran Nook in the pages and today um, <laughs> this video is going to be I think a bit hard for me to film because I want to talk about a book that had a very um, emotional and meaningful impact on me and I don't think I've ever seen myself as represented, as seen in a book before as I have with this one and it really struck a chord with me. <laughs> so hopefully I managed to get to the end of this video without crying. I I'm not promising anything, um, but the book that I'm talking about is Any On My Mind by Nancy Garden. Now. <laughs> I honestly don't know how to talk about this book, gosh. Maybe some information about this book before I get lost in, in everything else. This book was first published in 1982 and it is the love story between two girls, Annie Kenyon and Liza Winthrop, who is the main character and who is also the narrating voice of the story. They meet one day at the Met in New York and they immediately feel an instant connection to each other in some weird way. They start talking to each other, they become friends and their friendship intensifies to a point where they start wondering if this friendship is just the beginning of something more and what that is. The story is told in a flashback way because it opens with Liza at MIT in college and she is looking outside her window, it's raining and she thinks of Annie. She goes to a drawer and she picks up this letter, the last letter that Annie had written to her and then she starts remembering and thinking and that's how we are introduced to their friendship, to how they met and how their relationship developed throughout the following months, until we catch up with the present that is the beginning of this book. I don't want what I've said so far to somehow dismiss or reduce this book to a smaller dimension. This is not just a love story, it is a coming of age story, it is a journey of self-discovery, of finding your identity, finding more about your sexuality, finding that one person that is what you were missing the other half. I feel like the best way I can describe this book is trying to tell you how I was feeling while reading it. It was like I was in a movie theater and I was watching a story unfold on the screen and it was just me, nobody else in the room and the air around me was almost ethereal, almost non-existent and I was there watching this story unfold and I couldn't breathe I didn't want to breathe, I didn't want to whisper, I didn't want to utter a single word because it would have broken the magic that I was witnessing. It was as if Liza and Annie were in their own bubble and I was watching this precious moment that was so fragile and so delicate, so magical and even a wisp of air, the hint of a sound would have just snapped the thread that was holding this precious moment together and it would have gone away vanished into non-existence. I was in a state of suspension watching something, as I've said, so precious and tender that I couldn't believe how lucky I was to be there and to witness this love story 
come to life. That's what I was feeling while I was reading, actually listening to the audiobook of this one. And if you do read this book, and I strongly invite you to do so, please listen to the audiobook because it was narrated by Rebecca Lohman and she helped create this atmosphere that I've tried to describe to you. A wonderful way to read the story is listening to the audiobook, so I definitely recommend you do that. Apart from how great Rebecca Lohman was in reading this book, the writing style itself of Nancy Garden perfectly complements the tenderness and the magical, almost unreal veil that envelops this book. Have you ever felt really close to someone? So close that you can't understand why you and the other person have two separate bodies, two separate skins. I think it was Sunday when that feeling began. Mostly it was the closeness. It made my throat ache wanting to speak of it. As I've said in the beginning of this video, I, I saw myself in this book in so many ways, specifically in how the main character, she never really consciously thought about her sexuality, she never really questioned it. She just felt different, but she never really stopped to wonder, to think on it. And that wasn't out of worry of realizing that she was gay, or because she was afraid of what society would say, what would happen to her with her family, how they would treat her differently. Of course, that is going to be a big part of what happens later in this book, because it is set in the 1980s, She's going to a private school, to the Foster Academy, and homosexuality was not accepted, still isn't. And only when Annie comes along, things change and she starts to actually think about it and to question herself and try to identify what she's feeling and why is it different. Is it any in particular that is bringing out these feelings or is something that was already within her? It was true I had never consciously thought about being gay, but it also seemed true that if I were, that might pull together not only what had been happening between me and Annie all along and how I felt about her, but also a lot of things in my life before I'd known her. Things I'd never let myself think about much. Even when I was little, I'd often felt as if I didn't quite fit in with most of the people around me. I'd felt isolated in some way I had never understood. And that hits close to home in a very powerful, relatable way. I loved how innocent Liza was. There's a scene in the book where Liza picks up the dictionary to look up the word homosexuality when she's questioning her sexual orientation. It says something like attraction to the same gender and she is genuinely upset that the dictionary said nothing about love but only about attraction. I don't know. That did it to me! Now, don't get me wrong, it is a very sweet and pure book, but I mean it in the sense that the feelings are pure, that they truly love each other. As you go on, the two main characters, Annie and Liza, they also act physically on their feelings. It is steamy as well, and considering that this book was written and published in the 1980s, that was impressive. I was pleasantly surprised and at the end of the book there's also an interview with the author and you realize how almost revolutionary and how radical that was for that time. This book has been publicly burned in front of libraries when it came out and that just takes my anger and indignation to a whole new level that there are people in this world that are so close-minded and just idiots that they would go so far as to burn a wonderful book that is so pure and incredible just because it has gay people. Like, what have they done to you? I just... I don't get it, it just, uh, it's mind-blowing to me in the worst, terrible way, but 
Anyways, there's also a lot of that in this book. So trigger warning for homophobia because things happen to these characters and also to other characters present in the story that are relevant in the main character's lives because of their sexuality, because of who they are and I loved how it was stressed many times in this book that just because other people think that it's wrong, that it's sinful, it's just what they think. What they think does not make it wrong, does not make it sinful, does not make it unnatural. Definitely trigger warning for homophobia. There are Bible passages that are cited more than once and other things, other accusations that are made towards the main characters and other characters in the story that are, that were very hard to read, like they, they kind of hurt me, but in the way that it's supposed to do, in the way that it's supposed to hurt, to realize how wrong this behavior is, how wrong being homophobic is and can hurt people but it isn't said in a preachy way in a way that says hey i want to get this message across so you can learn of course that is the end goal that is the purpose because again 1980s things were different but not that much unfortunately um, but it's just done in a way that makes you understand these characters and feel for these characters and hopefully it makes you step in their shoes so that you can understand what it means, what it feels and how you can have a better behavior and conduct not only towards LGBT people but also in your life, how your actions, how your words could help LGBT people change the world, hopefully, to a better place. And I honestly think from the bottom of my heart that this book should be a mandatory read for everyone because it is written beautifully, it's a wonderful love story and it can teach you so much. It makes you feel so much and it makes you understand so much about gay people but in a way that also embraces lgbt people as a whole community so i'm gonna wrap it up here i hope that editing me in the future doesn't hate me doesn't hate my guts that much because i can assure you the footage is gonna be just a nightmare for me <laughs> to live through and to edit but it had to be done. This book is now so important to me. As I've said, it's one of my favorite of all time because it just <sighs> spoke to me in so many ways for the representation, for the characters, for the New York setting because New York has and always will have a special place in my heart. And also, I forgot to say this. I mean, it's a tiny thing, but in that moment, it just it made me so happy. Um, Annie is of Italian descent, so there is a scene where she says um, Buon Natale, amore mio, which means Merry Christmas, my love. And this is the first Christmas that I will spend with my girlfriend. So it just, it just made me emotional again. But anyways, I'm gonna wrap it up here because, because I need to. But please read this book, it was absolutely lovely. And I can assure you that you will enjoy it, that you will enjoy the audiobook because that's the way to go. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it wasn't too much of a mess. <laughs> Thank you for staying till the end if you did. Before I go, a reminder to subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Click the bell icon to get notified whenever I upload a new video. You can like and share this video, follow me on the social media. I have a coffee account which is a digital tipping service. You will find all this information in the description down below. And yeah. Thank you so much for watching, it means the world to me and I will see you tomorrow with another Vlogmas video. Until then, have a good one, take care and keep reading. Warm hugs! Bye!